This right here is the damage report to my 2017 Volkswagen Golf R. Insurance said that the car is totaled because it would cost over $30,000 to repair. For example, the front bumper, as it states, it would cost over $1,100 in parts to repair. But today we're gonna try to do it for only about 50 bucks. A few It'll weeks ago, I had the crazy idea to buy a crash damaged car and rebuild it. <laughs> I thought it would be a good way to get an expensive car at a discount, if not a fraction of the price. Well, little did I know this would be one of the biggest challenges I had ever faced, mainly because I have zero experience working on cars. You see, when I first bought the Volkswagen Golf R, it really didn't look that bad in the photos, but boy, was I completely wrong. When I finally got the car in person, I realized there was a lot more wrong with it than I had originally thought. The car wouldn't start, there was no no coolant, and the deeper I looked into it, the more broken things I would find. But it was too late to go back on my word. In the coming weeks, I've managed to overcome quite a lot of obstacles. I got the car running. Wow, started up easy. Replaced the damaged fender, and in the last episode, I even figured out how to fix the headlight and replace all the broken front end pieces. So we've come quite far since the beginning. So given the point of the front end of the car, as you can see right here, there's really not much more that needs to be fixed. Honestly, it's just the hood, which we can hopefully get replaced today, as well as fixing the front bumper you can see right here. So we're gonna start by repairing the front bumper of this car, and once this bumper is good and back on the car, then I'll be able to swap over the hood. Now, I really believe I'll be able to save this hood, as well as about $1,100, and let me show you why. Luckily, the only thing that got damaged on this front bumper was just right here. As you guys can see, it just barely missed any of the sensors, and it's really only just plastic that needs to be pushed back. On the topic of pushing things back, we also have to push some of these panels back in, as they did kind of get popped out during probably the movement of this car with the big forklift. But honestly, this seems pretty easy to do. And then we're gonna start by trying to plastic weld this front from the underside, and then we're gonna put some body filler over it and hopefully get it back on the car. Starting with the lower grill, using a screwdriver and applying upwards pressure, I was able to pop out each of the clips that were holding the grill to the bumper. As you can see, there are quite a lot of tabs, so the task was quite tedious. With the grill finally out of the way, I was able to get to the lower silver trim pieces at the bottom of the bumper. Now, I had to bend the trim out and then around the bumper so that it could fit correctly into the clips. And this had to be done in a few different spots on the bumper. So all the cosmetic trim pieces are back in place, which look good to me. I took out the grill here because I'm trying to take everything that needs to come off in order to access the damage. I don't know if you guys can see it now, but this is where the damage is. There's about one, two, three, maybe four cuts in the plastic that we're gonna try to plastic weld. But in order for me to get a good area to work with here, I'm gonna have to remove all this stuff here first, and then we should be able to plastic weld. The first thing that I did was unplug the headlight washer as well as the parking sensors. With everything unplugged, I was able to take off the first layer of plastic using a screwdriver. This plastic shield was only really held down by just a few clips, so removing it was pretty easy. The next step was removing the headlight washer assembly, which was held down by just two torque screws. Now, in order to actually pull the assembly off the bumper, I had to remove the front plastic trim piece first, which was held down by two pegs, so all I had to do was bend them around the front plate, and I was able to pull it off. Now, with that out of the way, the assembly came right out. All that was left was the last piece of plastic, which was only held down by two more torque screws and just some clips. So with everything out of the way, we can finally start bending everything back into shape before we go ahead and plastic weld.
All right, so the heat gun worked really well heating up the plastic, and once it's heated up, it actually becomes really malleable, and I was able to align everything back into the right place for the most part. Now, I wanna show you guys the kit that I bought on Amazon for only 40 bucks. This is the plastic welding kit, and I'll link it down in the description if you wanna pick one of these up. It is extremely helpful, and it should make this project quite a lot easier. Now, it works uh, as such. Basically, you put a staple, it comes with these staples, into the end of here, these two prongs, you press the button and it heats the staple up and then you push it into the plastic, let go of the button, it cools down and you can pull it out and ideally, it'll hold it into shape as we staple it all together. They also come with a ton of different types of, of plastic that we can melt on using this prong thing here and we can melt it back into shape. And I'll show you guys in a second what that looks like, but this hopefully is everything I need to get this bumper back into shape. Now, once everything's stapled up and ready, then what we're gonna do is I bought this Bondo here, 3M lightweight body filler, and we're gonna fill it in, and then after, sand it down, and then we're gonna use uh, Z-Grip Glaze, which is like a finishing putty to get it really smooth and then we should be good. Spray a little primer and we'll be good to go. Let me start off by saying I had a lot of fun using this plastic welder and I realized how useful this tool can be the next time something breaks as most everything nowadays is made of plastic. Like I said before, using this tool is pretty simple. You just insert a staple into the prongs and press the trigger to heat it up. Then you just push down into the plastic and it melts right through it. Now the thing you need to remember is not to go too far deep or you can push through to the other side. And the key step here is once it's in the plastic, you want to turn it as this will embed the staple into the bumper. Then just let go of the trigger, wait a second for it to cool off, and pull up. By doing this, the staple should stay where you put it. Then just repeat the process on all the places you're trying to mend together. Now, once the staples are in place, you can use the wire cutters that come in the kit to cut the ends off the staples, and you'll see why this is important in the next step. Once all the ends are cut off, you can either use the included polycarbonate rods to add plastic to the bumper and fill in the gaps, or you can just brush over the areas at the tops of the staples to close off any of the entry points. With the back of the bumper finally reinforced and fixed, I could start sanding down the high points in the front of the bumper with my Dremel. I'm trying to do as much work now so that the body filler process will be much easier. The last step was also to scuff up the bumper in preparation for the body filler so that it has a surface to stick to. So the bumper is pretty much repaired in regards to its sturdiness and holding its shape, but I want to put it all back together and back on the car, and the reason is because leaving it on this stand here is changing the way the body lines are on this bumper, and I'll have a much better view on the car as to the way things are supposed to look before I start bondoing it as well as sanding it down into the correct shape. So let's put it back together. As I was putting the bumper back together, I did find another piece of broken plastic, so I quickly welded that back into place and then continued finishing the assembly.
With everything installed back onto the bumper, it was time to loosely mount it to the front of the car. This can be done by positioning the bumper in front of the car and then pushing each of the sides in until they lock into the clips that are mounted on the fender. With the bumper mounted, I was able to put two center torque screws in just to hold it in place and help align everything to the car. I figured while we're at it, I might as well put the Volkswagen emblem on just to see what it looks like. It's been a long time. I did buy a, uh, a used one, so it should be the same, but not as broken as the last, which I'll show you. This is what the old one looked like, which ain't bad, but I have one that's actually complete. So let's put the new one on. the front end is finally put back together and honestly it doesn't look half bad there are a few things that i do notice that i do need to fix up but that's only because i bought this uh as a used part on ebay i just want to change maybe the emblem because it has a little more rock chips than the old one does and i also noticed that there's a little crack here but i knew that when i purchased it but that's easy we can either glue that or uh plastic weld it that will be good to go. But otherwise, the front end looks really, really good. It's finally nice to see the front end taking shape. Uh, the only thing left we'll have is the hood, which should be a pretty easy swap over. But really, now all we need to do is just make this little imperfection over here just slightly better. And then obviously when we get the car painted, we'll have whoever paints it touch it up a little bit or, or maybe it'll be good to just throw on some paint. But I'm really liking the way this front end uh, is starting to look. Once I get that done, maybe then we'll start to actually put the bumper back on the car. So I've never actually used body filler before, but I've watched quite a few other car rebuild YouTubers use it. So I have a pretty rough idea on what to do. Now, once I had the bumper mounted, I used a rasp to file down the high points in the plastic. And this is just to save me time when it comes to sanding. Next, I laid out a perimeter with painter's tape so that I had an area to work with. This is by far the most important step and you'll see why later in the video. With my work area masked off, I quickly sanded everything down. Alrighty, so I sanded down the bumper enough to where I believe it's pretty close to flat. The next thing I'm gonna do is clean this with a little bit of water and some rubbing alcohol to get it ready. Now we're gonna mix up this body filler, apply it over here and then sand it down. So as far as I understand, mixing body filler isn't really a science. The more hardener you use, the quicker it works. From what I've seen, just a pea-sized drop will actually do the trick. Then you just have to mix it well and apply it to the part you're trying to fill. Now, I used a piece of cardboard for this, but I'm sure they sell a special tool for this type of job. Anyways, after I applied it, I let it dry for about 30 minutes, and when I came back, the stuff was rock hard. I used my rasp again to file down the high points, and then I used 80 grit sand paper to shape it to the bumper. Now, given the area where the car was damaged, I needed to try and mold the body filler to the contour of the bumper and the body line that runs down the middle. I used a piece of masking tape above and below the body line to help me create and continue the edge on the bumper. Without this, I really don't think it would have came out as clean as it did. Next up was mixing this finishing putty, which helps fill in any pinholes and scratches left on the body filler. This stuff works the same as the body filler too, except you really don't need to apply that much. I also made sure to wear a mask and gloves as a precaution because I'm sure this dust is terrible for you to breathe in. Now lastly, I used 180 grit sandpaper to finish smoothing the bumper. From what I understand, when I applied the primer to the bumper, it should fill in all the scratches left on the 180 grit sandpaper and up. So that's why it's important to sand it down again after the 80 grit sandpaper. Alrighty guys, so it's a new day. We finished up the Bondo yesterday. We put uh, body filler on it as well as finishing putty. And then we sanded it down buttery smooth. It is very, very, very nice. We used a uh, 80 grit sandpaper to shape it and then 180 grit and then I used 400 grit to kind of smooth everything down and get it ready for some primer. So the next step is going to be using some rubbing alcohol, cleaning this area off and getting it ready for the primer that we picked up. And we should be good to go and it's ready for paint. I just want to give you a close up of what this looks like. You can see the high points we had to sand down from where the bumper was kind of pushed in here. That's about it though. Everything else is very smooth. We were able to continue this contour line on the bumper. It was quite difficult, but we were able to do it 
using some painter's tape, as you saw, putting it across, sanding on top, and then putting it on top and sanding on the bottom. And now everything's smooth and we should be ready to prime it. After cleaning off the bumper, I used a big plastic tarp to protect the rest of the car from overspray. The last thing I wanna do is have to remove black paint from places that shouldn't have it at all. Now, once the car was covered, I cut a hole in the tarp and taped it down to the original tape that we used to outline the damage. Now you know why I originally taped the bumper. It keeps everything clean and uniform. This way, I don't accidentally sand or prime areas that weren't prepped and aren't ready for any touch-ups. Doing one final clean, it was time to put on a few coats of sandable primer. Waiting about 10 minutes between each coat to dry, I put on about three coats, which was enough to hide the body filler. It's been about an hour and I've let this dry and it's pretty much dry to the touch. This is pretty much how I'm going to leave the bumper for now. And it's time to take off this plastic wrap and then start working on getting this hood removed and putting the new one on. With the bumper officially ready for the paint shop, it's time to start working on the hood. I bought this hood directly from the Volkswagen dealer near me because getting this shipped to me from anywhere else, even on a used or third party part, would have costed a fortune. All right, so before we continue any further, I just wanna break down yet again the build cost. There's three things that we have added. I forgot to mention one from uh, the previous episode, and that was the headlight fender mount, which was the small piece that went on the front of the fender to mount the headlight. That was only 13 bucks. We then have a new used, it is a used OEM part uh, that I got for $239. That is the grill where the Volkswagen emblem is. And then I bought a brand new hood that I picked up from Volkswagen for only $467, brand new. So the fitment should be spot on, except for maybe adjusting the brackets from the accident. So that brings our new total for the build to $16,000. $857.09, which isn't bad for a pretty much fully completed front end. The first thing that has to come off is the hood latch, which was only held down by two bolts. Since the new hood is upside down, I have to install everything the opposite way, which isn't really a big deal. Next is transferring these four rubber spacers and then transferring all the clips that hold the hood liner to the car. Now I know I'm going to hear about this in the comments, so I wanna talk about this now. The reason I'm installing everything now before paint is because it will be a couple of weeks before the car is ready for paint, and I really don't wanna run the risk of losing any of the bolts in the meantime. Plus, so far everything's been pretty easy to install so I don't really mind taking it back off. Anyways, the next things that needed to be removed were these rubber guards that seemed to fill in the gaps between the headlight, the bumper, and the hood. I did have to bend the crush part of the hood with my needle nose pliers to create enough space to remove the one that was sandwiched in between. Lastly, it was time to remove the windshield washer sprayers, which involved pulling them down and towards me, and they just kind of popped out. Then you just have to unplug the connector and pull the black clip out and then pull the washer fluid hose off. With everything unplugged, I was able to take the gasket off and snake everything out of the hole it came from. So everything that has to come off the old hood is off and it's already been transferred to the new one. The last few things that's needed in order to get this hood officially off is taking off this kind of hydraulic arm and uh, unscrewing four bolts at the, uh, the hinges, which is two here and two on the other side. Now it's just me and there's, I already attempted it. There's no way I'm gonna be able to take this hood off myself and put the new one on. So I'm gonna have to wait, grab my girlfriend and she's gonna help me put the new hood on. While I wait for her to come back, I figured I could fix the grill really quick. As you can see, the crack is in a tough spot to use the staples, but the kit does come with wire mesh, which should be perfect for this job. I cut out a small piece and bent it in half to create the same edge as the grill. Taping the grill into the right spot, I was able to put the mesh inside of it and melt it into the inside of the grill, which surprisingly fixed the problem. The last thing I wanted to do was swap the emblems from the broken grill to the new one on the car. This is because the broken one was in much better condition and didn't have rock chips. To do this, you just need to wedge something in between the emblem and its backing and then slowly work around it with a plastic pry tool and it should just pop right off. All right, so um, you're gonna stand on that side, hand up here and then one on this side here, right? I'm gonna take your screws off the two nuts. Then I'm gonna take these two off here. First this, 
and then we're gonna walk it over. So with everyone on the same page, it was time to attempt the hood removal. I started by taking off the hydraulic lift, and then I unscrewed the two bolts on Heather's side, freeing it from the car. I did the same on my side and boom, the hood was actually off the car. Then I just had to reverse the process with the new hood, making sure everything aligned good enough so that it wouldn't hit the car when I closed it. The last step was snaking the wiring harness back into the hood and putting the windshield washers back on the car. So with the help from Heather, we were able to officially get the hood installed on the car. Now I want to do a little bit of tweaking off camera because it is a little bit time consuming and I don't want to waste all my space and memory on this card, but that is official. We have officially gotten a new hood and the car is literally coming together. It looks so freaking cool. Let me show you guys what this looks like. So as you guys can see, the hood is officially on the front end of this car and the front end is looking really good. If I do say so for myself, I'm actually surprised at how well this front end is coming together. Yes, there's a few things that we do need to tweak ever so slightly. Honestly, the body lines do look pretty good all the way to the car. I was having trouble aligning these gaps here and I'm thinking, oh, it has everything to do with the brackets here on either side of the car. And I was fiddling around with it and then I just realized something here. Do you remember those rubber mounts we installed? I just wanna show you real quick. When I pop this, check it out. These rubber mounts right here change everything on the car. And notice here, I didn't put them in at any specific way. You can see there's a few creases on here. If this goes up, a few creases here. Uh, this one's a little bit too far in. This one's really far in. This one's super far in. That changes how this car sits and mounts on the car. So if I adjust these a little bit, it should get this to line up perfectly and everything should be straight in on the car. So I'm super excited that it's literally just adjusting these things here and then we should be good to go. So that is officially wrapping up pretty much the front end on this car. But that's it for the front end. After this and on to next video, we're gonna be doing interior work, which is a whole different ball game. But so far, everything looks great. I'm super thrilled that everything's coming together. And with all that being said, that's gonna wrap up today's episode. Make sure to smash the like button, turn on post notifications, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.